evening, everyone, and welcome once again to Friday Night Frenzy. Once again, presented by the Venice Pub and Pizzeria of Ishpeme. I'm Jerry Taylor, and my thanks again to Sam Ali for filling in for me last week as I enjoyed 70 degree temperatures in New Mexico and Texas. We begin the frenzy tonight with the lone undefeated girls team left in the Upper Peninsula. The Marquette Redettes were back at home tonight for the first time in a while, taking on the Houghton Gremlins. The Gremlins played right with the Redettes early on. Sloan Zenner gets the ball, she spins in the lane and gets it to go, tying the game at two. More from Houghton on their next trip down the floor. Sydney Dillinger from the same spot, Zenner made one. Dillinger delivers her team a two point lead. For Marquette, Shayla Hubner with the rock, passes it to Hunter Vila, who buries the three, giving the Redettes the lead right back. This Marquette team is very unselfish. They love to pass the rock. Martha Storm makes the bucket in close off the great feed from Lizzie Kareen. More passing from the home squad. Vila down low to Maddie Condon for the hoop and the harm. Marquette led 14-11 after one, and the Redettes win it 49-39 to stay undefeated. West Ishmael would be the site for Westwood going against Nagani this evening. Midway through the first, Gabrielle Hebert drives to the hoop, lays it up, and lays it in with the foul. Westwood up two. Later in the first, Stemley Carlson finds Shelby Kellen at the top of the key for three, and she gets it to go. The sweet stroke puts the Patriots up three, but Nagani would respond. Adina Anderson dishes it to Clara Johnson. Nothing but the bottom of the net, game tied after one. Johnson to the second quarter, then finds Haley Fazat. She drives through some traffic and gets the tough layup to fall. Game tied again late in the second quarter. The Miners would go on to win the game 36-29 over the rival Patriots. Just a couple of girls games on the docket tonight. Kingsford was victorious at Iron Mountain 75-59. Norway held off a late search from Gwynn 50-42. And the game between Big Bay did not and Stevenson was called off today because, well, the Eagles did not have school. Mother Nature strikes yet again. Next up, boys basketball as the Munici Mustangs contingent followed their team to Gwynn tonight. First quarter, Colin Immel came to play for the Stangs. He knocks down the three, giving his team the early 11-6 lead. But here come the model towners, Mike, uh, Micah Heath. A little separation, throws up his right hand and Heath gets the home court, bounces his team down just one. Munising's Colin Immel kept getting the ball, and for good reason. Immel hit five threes in the game. He finished with 15 points. Darren Sanavi was trying to figure out how to stop him. Immel had four threes in the opening eight minutes. For Gwynn, Reed Weidenhofer. Weidenhofer hits the jumper, pulling his team back within five. Play of the night, though, belonged to Andy Cooper. Coop comes up with the steal, and Coop finishes with authority on the other end. Well, speaking of authority, we are the UP Sports Authority. Let's see the dunk one more time but we slow it down for you. Munising wins it 42-24 over the Model Towners. In other Class D boys basketball action, North Central had six guys score in double figures as the Jets beat the Cougars. Forest Park also won big at Bark River Harris. Carninato took care of business at home against the visiting Nordics, and Midpen won at Rapid River. To Gladstone were the sixth man watched as their Braves played host to the Maroons. Third quarter action, Andrew Olasek for three, and he hits it. This puts Gladstone up by six, 32-26. Gladstone kept the pressure on. Number 20, Hunter Botruff hits what I like to call a beautiful J. Braves lead 37-31. Coach Perlicosi, however, not panicking. He knows his boys. He sets up this play. Boom, boom, boom. Leave thy Kempka on the cross-court action to take the lead, 39-37. Maroons continue. Adam Nolde. Straight up ball skills. Menominee up 41-37. Gladstone, though, not going away quietly. Hunter Batra for three to tie it, and he makes it look easy. 43 apiece. Menominee, though, plays a little around the world, and Caleb Kleiman seals the deal off the window and in. 49-43, the Maroons over the Braves, leaving the Gladstone fans not happy. Back to the boards. Escanaba defeated Houghton 77-61. Ossie Corp had 14 points and nine rebounds as the Hematites Pulled away from the Emeralds in the second half for the 10-point road victory. Calumet, Calumet won big at Chassel, 60-28. Hancock, winner, winner, chicken dinner, 62-54 against Ontonagon. Lance won at West Iron County, and Lakeland and Hubble defeated Jeffers, clinching a third straight conference title for the Lakes. We have reached halftime here on Friday Night Frenzy, and we're far from being done. Next up, some high school and college hockey action from Delta County and... Bowling Green, Ohio, straight ahead on the frenzy right here on the UP Sports Authority. You know it, ABC 10.
and welcome back to Friday Night Frenzy, once again presented by the Venice Pub and Pizzeria of Ishpeming. The enemy hockey team has struggled to score as of late, while Wildcats are in a battle with Bemidji State to host a playoff series in the first round of the WCHA playoffs. NMU is in the lovely state of Ohio this weekend, facing number eight Bowling Green. The game was scoreless in the second. The Falcons on the attack. Brandon Hawkins shoots and scores from near the blue line, giving BG a 1-0 lead. Later in the period, Dan DeSalvo going to step around NMU defenseman Jordan Klimek, but he wouldn't step around Jake Baker, who knocks him into the net. Everyone, though, would be okay. In the end, the Cats get the win, 3-2 in overtime. Ryan Kesty scored the OT goal off a pass from Sammy Salmon, and so the Cats pick up a much-needed win, and hey, score some goals, too. In other scores from the WCHA, Ferris State held on for a 2 one win at Alabama Huntsville, and it's a good thing NMU won because Bemidji State did the same thing. 3-2 at home over the Seawolves. In high school hockey, Escanaba and Calumet played a thriller tonight at the Wells Sports Complex. Early in the first, Levi Wonder gets the puck in his stick, and you know what's going to happen by now. Wonder with the tally, 1-0 Eskimos. Later in the period, Christopher Lemire. Dipsy doodles his way around the defender, then he goes top shelf for a pretty goal. 2-0 Escanaba after one. In the third, here comes Calumet. Max Fredrickson shot from the point, going to get through traffic, and the keeper as well, pulling the Copper Kings within a goal. Later in the period, Calumet down just one. Tyler Locust puts the puck on net, and he scores, tying the game at three. Escanaba's Levi Wonder, surprise, surprise, scored 24 seconds into OT, giving the Eskimos the four three win. We stay indoors because, well, who really wants to be outside these days? The UP swimming and diving finals are today and tomorrow in Marquette. Let's show you some of the action from earlier today. Let's go to the MSHS natatorium. If you don't know what natatorium means, look it up. The girls started the competition on the one meter dive. Madeline Schweikert from the Sioux, her second dive earned her 26 points. She finished in third place. Next up, Here's Westwood's Isabella Heidelberger. That's fun to say. The Patriots senior had a nice day in the pool, finishing in second place. Your girls' one-meter diving champion was from the Copper Country, Houghton's Lauren Jackson, with a little somersault through the air with a little half twist on her second dive. She finished with 169 points to seal the deal. Next up, the boys' one-meter diving competition. Ricky Vermeulen of Marquette started his day off with a Nice dive, which earned him 28 points for an early lead. His lead, though, did not last for long. Sault Ste. Marie's Levi Fur scored 33 points in his first dive of the competition. Houghton Sal Sharp coming up here. Didn't like his first dive of the day, but guess what? He would win it in the end, taking the title. Swimming events start tomorrow morning at MSHS. That's going to do it for this edition of the Frenzy, the UP Swimming and Diving Championships. Once again, continue tomorrow at the MSHS pool. Also in Marquette, the UP High School Bowling Finals at Superior Lanes. The Michigan Tech and Northern Michigan basketball teams are back in action with the Huskies taking on Lake State. The Wildcats battle Northwood. There's also skiing this weekend at Alquall in Ishmeen with NMU and Michigan Tech in action there. Don't forget the Daytona 500 this Sunday. We'll see if Jeff Gordon can win it in his final time. Jimmy Kimmel is next. Have a great weekend, everyone. Good night.